Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite luxury beauty products for summer as I get ready for the day. And I pulled out several items for each category in some cases. So I'm just going to show you everything I have here, starting with the most important category for summer, which is SPF. And really this is the most important category year round, but certainly over the summer, if you're gonna be spending a lot of time outdoors, maybe you have some fun beach vacations planned. You are definitely going to need some SPF in your beauty arsenal. So these are a couple of my favorites. Some of them I've used for years and I'm constantly restocking. I love Super Goop products and both of these work really nicely beneath makeup. So the first is the Glow Screen. You've heard me talk about this quite a bit. It has SPF 40 and it leaves such a beautiful sheen on the skin. It's basically an illuminating primer, but you get the SPF 40. It also looks beautiful on the neck, chest, decollete. Because it's in the squeezy tube, it's really easy to just throw in a makeup bag. Looks gorgeous beneath a matte foundation. And then this is new. This is the Super Goop Every Single Face Watery Lotion with SPF 50. This is for people who just want a sunscreen for the face. Nothing fancy. You don't need a dewy finish. It doesn't have to be mattifying. You just want your sun protection. It has SPF 50 and it's a gel lotion. So it goes on really lightweight. You just kind of massage it in and it kind of feels like a daily moisturizer. Of course, I would recommend moisturizing first and then layering this on top because you're going to have to use enough product to truly get the SPF 50. And then this isn't new, but I used it for the first time when we went to the Keys a couple weekends ago. This is the Glow Oil with SPF 50. This is so convenient. I used this every single day we laid out and I don't really like to lay out in the sun. I typically find a big umbrella or a nice shady spot, but I will still go in with my SPF just in case I have sun exposure. And it just looks really pretty on the skin. It was really easy to reapply. I didn't feel like it was really thick and greasy. So I will most likely purchase the full size bottle of this glue oil and I'll use this for my body. But I love this little convenient size because it's great to just pop into your purse and just take this with you for the day. And then reapplying sunscreen to the face is very difficult if you have a full face of makeup. So I purchased this resetting spray. It's a refreshing mist with SPF 40. Somebody pointed out that I would have to spray a lot of this mist on my face to truly get the SPF benefits. And that's certainly true, but I still think it's better than nothing. If you're going to be outside, if you're spending a lot of time outdoors and you're not really sure how you're going to reapply sunscreen on top of your makeup, I think some sort of setting mist like this would be great. Now, my only complaints about this and you know, it's petty. I still take this with me everywhere. I've j just thrown it in my purse is the mist is not incredibly even. So you just have to be careful. You kind of have to douse the entire face in order to make sure it's evenly spread across your entire complexion. But I do think the convenience factor makes it worth it. And it does have rosemary and mint, so it's very refreshing. My favorite SPFs with a little bit of coverage are these two. The Chanel CC Cream has SPF 50. It has vitamin C, Moringa Plum Extract, Hyaluronic Acid. It's hydrating. It gives you really great coverage. You could use this as just your, your foundation for the day, or you could kind of spot treat the face. Like if you have rosacea or post blemish marks, maybe you have hyperpigmentation, you could use a little bit of the CC cream just to simply color correct and then go on top with something else. It's a really versatile product. I think everybody needs it. And then we have the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint with SPF 40, Niacinamide, Squalene, and Hyaluronic Acid. I have shade ST8, Shella, and in the CC cream, I wear beige 30. But the Ilia is great because it's another one of those sunscreen, makeup, skincare, hybrid products. It does a little bit of everything for you. It's very lightweight, so I typically go in with a very sheer, thin layer on my skin. I doubt I get the full benefits of the SPF 40, but I do like that it has a little sun protection in there. I think this is a great everyday foundation, a little dab and go. You can use your fingers. You don't necessarily need a brush. So this would be great if you're spending a lot of time outdoors, maybe a beach day, pool day, if you're going to a theme park or some sort of I don't know, summer excursion outside. You just want a little coverage on your face, but you're not doing a full face of makeup. This is amazing. And then you can always spot correct if you like to build up a little bit of coverage in certain areas. You could always go in with a stick foundation is what I typically use or your concealer. Another great everyday summer weight foundation that does not have SPF, well it has SPF 15, which is 
virtually nothing, is the Vita Lumiere Aqua from Chanel. It's water-based, so it's great for all skin types. You have to give this bottle a really nice shake every single time you use it. And you can hear there's a little ball in there. So you give it a really nice shake, but this again, you can blend it out with your fingers. It's buildable coverage, but it's pretty lightweight and it feels very lightweight on the skin. Now, if you're sitting here thinking, well, that's great, Erin, but I have a summer wedding coming up and I need something that's going to look very full glam, but still hold up in the heat and humidity over the summer, that's when I would go in with my Guerlain L'Essential. This is the high perfection 24 hour wear. Not to be confused with the glossy bottle of the Guerlain L'Essential. I believe this is a Selfridges exclusive, but if you know your Guerlain foundation shade, take a risk. I promise you will not regret it. This is my number one foundation at the moment. It's what I've been wearing almost every single day, or at least every day that I've taken pictures or I filmed and I've wanted to feel fabulous because it is matte, it's long wear, but it just looks beautiful on the skin and it truly is perfecting. I'm actually gonna start applying products to the face now. I am going to begin with this as my primer. This is from Iconic London. It's their Radiance Booster and it's available in several different shades. This is Champagne Glow. It's very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. In fact, I'll swatch them so you can see the difference. This is the Iconic London Champagne Glow. This is the Hollywood Flawless Filter in the shade 3, light medium. Looking at them both, I would say the Iconic London is a little bit creamier. It's a little bit more opaque versus the Hollywood Flawless Filter, which is a little bit more sheer. But I am using this one because, unfortunately, my Hollywood Flawless Filter has a bit of a funny smell to it. I used this the other day for the first time in a while and I was just kind of knocked over by the smell. And it's old, it's been several years, but it's just not worth the risk. I think it would probably be okay, but I don't wanna risk getting some sort of skin irritation, infection, some sort of breakout situation because I used a stinky Hollywood Flawless filter. So this is going to be decluttered. Instead, I'm gonna go in with the Iconic London and I do prefer the pump. I think the squeezy pump is just so much easier to get the product versus the doe foot wand in the bottle. The only thing I have on my face right now is moisturizer and I just did, I would say maybe three quarters of a pump. It wasn't quite a full pump, but you really just don't need very much. I'm gonna start in the center points of the face and blend out. This is another one of my favorite summer products because it just gives a beautiful glow to the skin. And it is going to help even out your complexion. It's going to help grip the makeup because it creates a nice base layer. And it can also be used on your neck chest decollete which I love to do over the summer, especially if I'm wearing something that's off the shoulder or my arms, or my shoulders are exposed, I'll always put a little highlighter or a little glow on there. I'm gonna combine these two today for foundation. I'm gonna spot treat with CC cream first and then I'm going to go on top with a little bit of the Vita Lumiere Aqua and just cover the places that I think I need a little bit more coverage. But I really love this CC cream. And it's pretty thick, it's very hydrating, but it's not too dewy. I really think all skin types can wear this. You really don't need a brush, but since I have all of my brushes here, I might as well. I think it does such a great job evening out the skin. My skin's looking pretty even. I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of the Vita Lumiere Aqua, just on the cheeks and forehead. I don't have a favorite summer concealer. Concealer is one of those products that remains the same for me year round. And I do have other concealers that maybe don't have quite as much coverage. This is the Pat McGrath Labs, but I just never really grab them ever doesn't matter what I'm doing for the day. I typically go in with the same concealers. It's either the Pat McGrath Labs, the Chanel Corrector, maybe the LYS. The Tom Ford is really good as well. That's what I keep in my top drawer. And really when it comes to concealer, the main thing is that it doesn't crease. So I just stick to my tried and true concealers. 
if you want lighter coverage, you can always go in with less product, but it's more important that it's not going to crease on you. So that's why I basically stick with the same four. I guess the Armani Luminous Silk Concealer, that one doesn't really crease and it's pretty light coverage. That would be a great summer option, I suppose, if you want something different. I pulled out three of my favorite bronzers to talk about today. Two of them are Chanel. The only non-Chanel option is the Gucci bronzer. I just think it is a beautiful formula. It's a beautiful compact. The finish is really beautiful and I really like the shade. So I use shade Eclat Soleil number no. three, but it's just gorgeous. This has been one of my favorite bronzers ever since they released it. And then I really like this Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream shade 392. It's a smidge deeper than the original 390, which I also really love. I did an in-depth review of all three shades where I showed you each shade with a full, complete base of makeup. That way you can see what it looks like when the makeup is complete, not just a swatch. I will link that video down below in case you missed it, but I think it tells an interesting story because while you can see a difference between them, it's not nearly as noticeable as you might expect, but I really like the undertone of 392. And then I also really like the Jumbo Bronzer. This is an exclusive for this summer, so get your hands on it if you can, and I believe this is available now at chanel.com. It is available in the boutiques. I picked up Sunkiss Medium. I haven't had the chance to wear just the Le Beige bronzer yet. In my initial review, I layered this on top of the cream bronzer. So today I'm just going to apply this, but I did notice it had a really beautiful, slightly luminous kind of blurring effect on the skin. So I already know I'm going to love it. I think this is probably similar to their Luminous Le Beige. I mean, it's perfect. The medium shade is gorgeous. And there's something about this powder. I love the finish because it's not flat matte. Like I can see, it almost has like a, a bit of a gold sheen to it. Not shimmer, but just a little luminosity. Like it reflects light really beautifully. But then it also looks incredibly blurring. I am so tempted to pick up another one of these bronzers. They're so expensive. I know it would be nuts, but I just don't want to be without it. It's so pretty. I have been sticking to my guns with the no buy. I have not made a single makeup purchase besides Chanel Le Beige, which I did say was my one exception to the rule. I haven't even, honestly, I haven't really been tempted by anything. Nothing has made me even consider breaking the no buy. And I'm one month down. I started at the beginning of May, it's now June, and I said I was gonna go through mid-July, so I think I can do it. Setting powder is another product, like concealer, doesn't really change for me throughout the year. So before I went in with the bronzer, I did set my face using this NARS Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting Setting Powder. And I'm just gonna use the brush with no additional product to go around the outskirts of the bronzer and just blend. Same thing I would do if I used a cream bronzer, especially down here. Just ensures that any way you move your head around, you know, in normal life, when people are seeing you from all angles, it will always look well blended. Summer blushes are so beautiful. So this is another category where I pulled out several favorites. My two favorite liquid blushes are Giorgio Armani and Iconic London. This I started using last year. It's the Fluid Sheer Glow Enhancer in the shade eight. So it looks kind of neon pink in the bottle, but on the skin, it is almost like a liquid version of the Dior blush, the Rosy Glow. It's so subtle, very faint very natural and it just looks stunning. This is great for a no makeup day if you're just kind of dabbing a little bit on your cheeks, rubbing it out with your fingers and going. But even if I wanted to apply this on top of my makeup already powdered, I would simply squeeze a little bit of this on my hand and then use a powder brush to gently tap on the cheeks and it, it would just give me a little bit of color. So I love this, it has the glow built in. This is new and this was gifted to me on my recent trip. It's the shade Rose Riot. I think I have two shades. Both of them are beautiful. At first I thought this was going to be similar to the Laura Mercier Tinted Blush, which 
I don't really like. I like it. I mean, it's hard to dislike blush. Okay, it's pretty, but they're almost too sheer. Like they blend out to nothing. And at first I thought this was going to be similar, but on the face, it definitely shows up. But you can see it is still very faint, very sheer, but it does have a lot more pigment than the Laura Mercier, so I prefer this Iconic London. But again, it's similar to the Armani. It's gonna be perfect for a no makeup makeup, a beach makeup, a light, fresh-faced summer natural look where you just are dabbing a little bit on your face and then getting out the door. This would be beautiful. If you love a good multi-use product, something that's easy to throw in your travel bag, you'll probably really like this number one de Chanel Red Camellia Revitalizing Lip and Cheek Balm. I like the shade number two, Healthy Pink. This looks gorgeous on the lips, but I do like that it is a multi-use, so you could also use this as a cream cheek if you wanted to. In terms of powder blush, I have too many favorites. It would be impossible to name them all, but I love something that is a little bit warm and peachy like this new Tom Ford. This is the Shade and Illuminate Blush, Shade 2, Explicit Flush. I just love this pop of peach right here. Something like that over the summer is just ugh, perfection, especially with a warm tan, bronze, glowy skin, very dewy complexion. And you could do almost any lip with this. I mean, you could do, of course, a peach, a warm pink, a bold red would look really beautiful, corals, of course, or nude, anything. I'm gonna mix these two together. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the Iconic London and the Armani. Completely unnecessary. You certainly do not need both, but I just really like them both and I wanna see what happens. So I'm kind of just experimenting here. Ooh. Oh yes. That is so pretty. I'm not gonna use my fingers though because I do think if you're Adding something so liquidy on top of powder, you have to be careful. So I'm just gonna go in with my blush brush. <gasps> the Armani gives it such a pretty glow. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. Do you see that? Other side quickly, quickly before it dries. I don't want to waste more product, but done. And nothing budged underneath. I'm gonna do a little bit on the nose. Why not? I'm gonna look sun-kissed. Done. I pulled out two highlighters that I do think would be perfect for summer. This has been in the top drawer for a really long time now. In fact, I'm so close to hitting pan. It's from Westman Atelier. It's the Peau de Rose Super Loaded Tinted Highlight. Just my favorite highlighter of all time, honestly. It's so gorgeous. I just tap this on with my fingers. It looks beautiful year round, but especially over the summer, it, it has a very slightly pink undertone to it still looks like skin but a little bit pink so it adds a very fairy dust ethereal very angelic look to the makeup this would be beautiful on brides if i had the opportunity to redo my bridal makeup i would definitely use this as my highlighter it's so pretty the other highlighter i pulled out is iconic london i've been playing around with a bunch of these products over the weekend i was using all of them like full face of iconic london and i really enjoyed most everything so this is the illuminator in the shade original i thought maybe there was only one shade but i checked the sephora website and it looks like there are three shades it truly is like liquid gold it's so beautiful tapped on top of the cheeks but because it's a liquid you could mix this into your foundation to your primer to your moisturizer i love a highlighter like this for the body. I applied this to my shoulders, to my neck chest decollete. You can kind of blend it all over with a brush and it makes your skin look flawless. Sun-kissed perfection. I think this will look pretty with the blush. Just a little something something. Right on the tops of the cheeks. I 
I also think this highlighter looks really pretty other places on the face, like a little bit on the chin, the cupid's bow, the nose, right above the brows even. Any place that you feel would be appropriate to apply highlighter, you can apply this. Complexion is now done, so we're moving on to eyes. I quickly filled in my eyebrows off camera. That routine remains the same. I'm pretty boring and basic when it comes to eyeshadow year round, but especially over the summer, when I think about a fresh faced, light summer makeup look, I'm just gonna pop in a couple neutrals to the crease, to the lid, and be done with it. So these are my two picks for eyeshadow palette. Both of them are smaller, they're more simple. The Intense Eyeshadow Palette, this is one of the Lee Beige eyeshadow palettes from Chanel. I think this is summer in a palette. It is just perfect. This could be your everyday palette, and it just looks really pretty. It's versatile. You can go really light, you can go smokier. It's great for the work week, it's great for the weekend. And then I also really like this Tom Ford eyeshadow palette. This is the Tiger Eye palette because you have this really pretty warm peachy color. These are the tones that I basically live in for summer. Now for today, I'm gonna do something even more basic. I'm gonna go in the crease with a little bronzer, not the Gucci and not the powder Chanel. Instead, I'm gonna do a little bit of this cream bronzer in the crease. I've seen this done. I've maybe done this myself, but I just kind of want to try it out and see what happens. I just pulled out a Refer 01 brush and I'm just going to swirl right in there. It definitely works nicely. It blends a lot easier than you might expect it to. It looks a lot more like traditional eyeshadow. Now you do want to be careful when blending this up. That was really fast and simple. I'm going to put a little bit more on the outer lid. I really just went in the crease so far. But it looks great. It looks really opaque. It looks like a cream eyeshadow. With a flat brush, I'm going to pick up this shade right here. And I'm going to pat that on the lid. I'm taking it up to the crease, but not above it. The cream base is really gripping this powder eyeshadow, so it's making it look really opaque, but also really intense. It's very pretty. Now, if it continues to crease after this, then I'll know that it didn't work. <laughs> My experiment was a failure, but I've seen this done with the Chanel, not just any other cream bronzer. So I'm hoping it works. With a little pencil brush, I'm picking up the same shade and I'm going to buff that beneath the lower lash line. I don't want this look to get too smoky, so I'm not going to go in the outer corner, outer V with a deeper shade, but instead I'm going to pop a little something lighter on the center of the lid. I have this iconic London eyeshadow stick. This is the glazed crayon. So on one side, it's an eyeshadow crayon or a cream shadow stick, but this other side, this is so pretty. It's kind of this sheer, sparkle. It's not really glitter, it's more of a shimmer, and this is shade Champagne, but it's so sparkly and reflective and just really beautiful. So I'm gonna pop a little bit of that onto the center of the lid. Same thing on the other side, I'm just tapping this in the middle. I've only tried this one other time and I used the shadow stick side first. And then I layered this on top and it got a little bit messy. I'm gonna have to keep playing around with it, but I also found that it was just a little bit too hard, kind of dragged across the lid, which is always my problem with eyeshadow sticks, which is why I never really use them. But this liquid side, the shimmer is gorgeous. I just finished the eyes with a little brown liquid eyeliner and mascara, and now the last step is lips. And I do have a couple new lippies here. I think for summer, warm colors, light glossy colors are really pretty. A very popular trend we've seen lately, 
Liquid Balms. This is the new formula from Laura Mercier. It's called their new Lip Glossé, but it is described as a liquid lip balm. And then Givenchy also came out with liquid lip balms. They sent me a few shades. I haven't tried this formula yet, so I'm really interested to try that. And then I recently tried the Iconic London Lip Oil. This is another really popular trend. I love this clear lip oil. It looks beautiful on the lips and it feels really thick. It feels thicker than a gloss and it just coats the lips and makes them really shiny. So I really like that. And of course, I'm always a fan of the Rouge Coco Balms and the Rouge Coco Bloom Lipstick Formula from Chanel. These are some of my favorites. I just pulled out 110 Chance. These are nice because they're really smooth and hydrating, but they look incredibly opaque. So you get a ton of pigment in the Rouge Coco Bloom lipsticks. They're really beautiful. Probably my favorite bullet lipstick formula from Chanel. And then the Rouge Coco Balm is nice because it's very hydrating. It gives more of a sheer wash of color. I do think these have more pigment than a typical lip balm, so it could act as a really nice summer lipstick. This is... 914 Natural Charm. I also really like My Rose, which is more of a warm pink. Right now, I'm going to line my lips with Pillow Talk. This is my everyday lip liner. I used to never use lip liner. It's crazy to think that a couple years ago, I would never use lip liner, and now I cannot live without this. I get so sad whenever I lose it. I think I probably have three in different areas in my purse, over here, back on the vanity, just because I never want to go without it. I'm so curious. I have to try this new liquid balm. So this is the 001 liquid balm from Givenchy. definitely has more color once you apply it. It doesn't look like there's going to be much color because it's kind of swirled. I like it, but it's interesting. It is not a lip gloss. It does not give the same glass glossiness. It, it's still shiny. It feels and it looks truly like a liquid lip balm as if they melted a lip balm. I just assumed it was going to be like a lip gloss. It's not. And it has a little bit of a mintiness, like a plumping sensation. Just a little bit. I love this color too. It's very pink. It's very pretty. Ooh, I like it. I want to show you the difference in the glossiness. So I'm going to apply a little bit of the Iconic London Lip Oil on top so you can see how shiny this is. See, the lip oil just looks like glass. And it still feels really smooth. So it kind of just depends on the look you prefer. I think both are really pretty. My makeup for the day is now complete. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked hearing about some of my favorite luxury products for summer. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I love hearing from you guys, so be sure to share all of your luxury summer recommendations down below in the comment section. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.